Hey everybody, welcome to the shed and to an episode I'm calling Time Machine. Now, what? Yeah, no, I know I could use a time machine, but I let this happen to me so you could feel better about yourself. That's right. Think about it. This doesn't just happen. Okay, so whatever that was, let me get back to reality here so you can experience something like I do. Anyway, let's say you can pick a window of time, say between 1955 and 1962. And you can interrupt someone's Christmas and take one of their presents and say, you know what? I'm taking that and I'm putting it away until today. Like 60 some years later. Okay, think about the ability to do that. So, where does this all start? Well, it starts with you seeing a case like this at a yard sale, a swap meet, in somebody's garage. You know what's in here. You know that there might be an archtop guitar in here. You know it's the cheapest kind of archtop guitar. You know it's one of those guitars that costs somewhere between $16.50 up to the very high end of, I don't know, $29. And you put a dollar down and went on layaway. You know what, guys, up there in the helicopter. No, don't spy on me. I shot your drone down already. Just keep that helicopter away from me. Do you know that with a helicopter and a carefully placed and timed spotlight, you can ruin somebody's poinsettia nursery business? Did you know that? Well, you do now. Anyway, so you see a chip case and you open it. You don't want to be too excited because Everybody thinks that these guitars that might be in here are worth hundreds and hundreds and even a thousand dollars. Remember that episode I gave you to guide to archtop guitars and guide to purchasing an Econo archtop? Yeah, there's a playlist up there. You want to see those. But back to this. You're at the yard sale. And go back to that scenario. It's Christmas. You told somebody you put that guitar away again it's the cheapest of the cheap where is it i have to give you a little hint are you okay out there yeah so i'm giving you the opportunity you can pick one guitar one model of guitar that was made in that time frame it's got to be cheap got to be cano but there's only one above all that you would open up and go, oh, I cannot believe what I'm looking at. Guess what? That guitar is in here. Do you know what it is? Let's go open the case. You need to sit down. You need to pray. You need to light a candle and you need to your covetous self is about ready to go off into covetous paradise and covetous corner because, yeah, this is the one, brother. This is the one. Without further ado, let's open up the case because it happened this time. In Windemar, California, cultural capital of the world. Don't hate me because I'm not you. Because if I were you, I'd hate to be me. People, you are not gonna believe this. You're gonna be so completely and utterly disamazed. I am out here in Windemar, California, cultural capital of the world. And I do mean, I do mean that this time. This is the cultural capital of the world. I am at an Arco station. I have been here before on an episode I'm not gonna share with you just yet. But this is like the mega concentric, like, like the Integratron and Landers. This place is like a magnetic field for the coolest guitar stuff you have ever seen. I got my friend Dave and Shauna 
Wow, anyway, I'm just gonna show you. Here we go. Years ago, one of my friends needed some motorcycle parts that I had in my garage, and he got this from one of his customers that he delivered to. This is a 1950s, maybe early 60s, silver tone, Kentucky blue acoustic guitar. It was sold in the Sears and Roebuck catalog from 19, I believe 55 to 1962 or 63. It originally retailed for 1995 and by the time they discontinued it, it was 24.95. Um, arch top, you got your two F holes. And this is all original. I think what's the one uh, Robert Johnson with our hair Okay, let's take a look at the back of this thing first. Let's look at the headstock. It's got the original tuners, they're in good shape. Nothing's deteriorating or cracked. There's some scuff wear along this edge of the headstock. A few scratches here and there. Little, little uh, scratches of paint. The one thing I really want to show you here is look at where the neck attaches to the body. There's no separation anywhere there. And uh, I want you to notice that there's no strap button that they put here or here. And that has a lot to do with um, putting additional strain on the neck, especially sideways. If you're going to put a strap button on, don't put it here. You'd put it over on the side here. But they used to put the strap, uh, top strap thing on a on a rope right up here, that's what they would do. So um, let's lay this down in the, in the guitar vise. Um, the back of this thing is in pretty immaculate shape. There's a couple surface scratches here. There's a spot of paint missing here. And there is some edge wear here on this white paint. This is not binding, it was painted on. But you can see this thing does have an arch top back, um, the radius follows around like this, um, and um, I can't complain about the back of this thing. Let's turn it around. Again, starting at the top, there is one bent tuner. We're going to fix that with a, uh, a, a vice grips and a soldering iron, but short of these little nicks here, this is in immaculate shape. There's still dust on it. Notice that there's no ferrules on these um, tuning machines. This was not a high-end thing. The uh, nut is still there, the original nut. You can see that people have actually played this. Um, the action on it is not that bad. Um, the bridge is there. It's in full contact with the body. Sometimes you can tell that these things have been moved around. It is the original bridge. It's got the original tailpiece and the original strap button. But as you look at this thing, the paint on it is really, really good. Um, getting it in the uh, guitar vise here. I want to be careful. Last thing I want to do 
just drop this, but it has the original pit guard, uh, very flimsy. Uh, there's a speck of paint missing there and another one here uh, and some bits and pieces here. But short of that, everything is pr in pristine shape. If you look real cl close, there's crazing here, which is um, things splitting a little bit, surface cracking of the finish over time. But this is definitely an arch top. It matches the back. It's got that pronounced drop down here. The F holes are nice. Um, you don't find these in this kind of condition typically. Um, sometimes what happens is people put them in the case, they put them in the attic, it gets really cold, it gets really hot, things crack, they dry out, you get splits. Um, and so I really can't complain about this one. Now, let's take a look at one that's got some condition issues. Let's start off on the back of the headstock with this one too. You'll see that this one has a lot more wear. It's been bumped around a lot more. I want you to notice that the tuners are different. These are enclosed gear tuners. I think they say Clouse and Deluxe on them. I don't know if these have been changed out. I think this is a 1955, the first year of the model. This may have come with it. I'd have to take these off and see if there's evidence that these tuners have been changed out by somebody over time this one has definitely been played more plus there are a couple of the tuning pegs that are bent now as we go down the neck we're going to see some common condition stuff you see that pain is wore off there where somebody was playing it is pretty pronounced on this side you can tell where everybody played it um, the fingerboard is a lot more worn you can see that and when you look at the back of the neck you'll see that it is just starting to let loose just a tad right there. Um, as far as the back paint goes, it's not much worse than, let's get this laid in the stand, in the vise here and make it stable. Um, it looks pretty good until you get to this area. There's some a rough spot here where the wood is worn through. Somebody actually was playing this a ton. Uh, but the back of it isn't all scraped up with belt buckle stuff, but again, typical paint stuff. Again, this is not binding, it is paint. Again, starting at the top uh, of the headstock, it looks like somebody had this in a corner because there's house paint on it. It's chipped up pretty good, it's dusty. Same uh, original knot. The fingerboard has a lot, lot more wear, and you could tell somebody played a lot more of the frets than on the other one it has a remnant of the original pit guard pit guard hole there uh, but pay attention here the action on this one is considerably higher the bridge is the original bridge it's set down and it appears that someone either put their finger right here and played a lot or this bridge has slipped and that's more likely the case so the intonation on this one is probably not on it needs to be set by measuring between the back of the nut let's get up here the back of the nut here to the 12th fret and then that distance is the same to the middle of the floating bridge here so typically these are tilted a little bit so this all needs to be measured out um, the original tail piece is still here it's missing the uh, pin or strap button at the end, um, but there are no cracks in this thing, so um, it didn't take too many hot and cold winters and heat and, and bust it up. But this guitar is certainly used a lot more than the other one. You are typically going to find these guitars in the shape this one is in or worse. Okay, guys, there we go. The much sought after Kentucky Blue K Archtop guitar. Now, I'll summarize by saying this. If you find one in this condition, the only thing that we got to worry about is fixing that bent peg. And, and that right there will be an adventure. I'll show you how in a future episode. But um, you got to use care. But if you get one that's 
knot broke loose at the neck, is not all chewed up in the back, has all the paint on it, has a couple little dings. The action is okay, has the original hardware, the uh, strap button, all that kind of stuff, the pit guard. Yeah, you can expect to pay way over $500 for one of these things, but when you pick them up, they're really light. Uh, remember, they were a $16.50 guitar up to $24.95, I think. So they were at the lower end, and the, the build quality shows. So if you're going to get one, don't get wrapped up into the color. <laughs> Make sure that you don't get one that was uh, painted this way, uh, that wasn't a real one. But um, just remember, if you get one of these, don't expect to find it in this kind of condition. And if you do find one in this kind of condition, don't put pickups on it and mess it up. Just kind of put it away. Make sure that you got a wet sponge in a bag in the case and slack the strings off because the last thing you want to do is come to it later, open it up, and find it. Now, you're going to find guitars that are in a lot less condition. If you do decide that you're going to hot rod one up, those are probably it. And if you haven't figured it out already, yeah, the other guitar with the condition issues, yeah, I got two of them. And guess what? Believe this or not, I found these within two days of each other within driving distance. And it would surprise you which one I paid less for. Anyway, I've enjoyed this episode. I've wanted one of these for a really long time. One of these is going to come on the market and, uh, I'll let you know when it does, and it's probably going to be junk piled out. It's going to have a bolt in the neck and all that kind of stuff. Probably have a Curtis Novak pickup on it and do whatever I do, and it'll be a screamer. I'm afraid to show this picture to Bob Log because, you know what, I'm going to close this episode with a little clip of Bob Log playing one of these with duct tape all over it. In a song I know you're going to love called Cold Motor. Hey, if you haven't given me a subscribe and a like, do that on your way out and I will see you soon.